Hey there, in this video we are going to look at distributing binomials and we will look at them in um, different formats or different setups, but we will do this because it will be helpful when you get to the factoring and solving quadratics later in this unit. Um, if you know the patterns that we see in this lesson, later when we get to factoring you can take shortcuts that um, you wouldn't be able to take if you don't know these patterns. So while you can do factoring without seeing these patterns, it is very, very helpful um, especially on a time test to understand the patterns that we see, especially in some of our special types we'll look at here in a minute. So let's start off with a basic setup like we see down here in number one. So to distribute binomials, we multiply each term in the first set of parentheses by each term in the second set of parentheses. So that is the general um, pattern for multiplying any polynomials together, including two binomials. So again, um, multiply each term in the first set of parentheses by each term in the second set. Now, because of how a binomial is set up, there is a pattern um, and FOIL is an acronym that can be helpful to um, multiply two binomials together. So F stands for first, O stands for outer, I stands for inner, L stands for last. So first means the first number or term in each parenthesis gets multiplied together. And then we have outer. So outer would be the first one in the first parenthesis and the last one in the second parenthesis. So that would be these two, A and D. And then we have um, inner. So inner would be this one right here and this one right here getting multiplied together. And then the last would be the last term in each of the parentheses. So that would be this one here and this one here being multiplied together. So that is the general pattern. So let's go ahead and try that on example one below. So I like to draw my little rainbow arcs here. So 2x times 3x will go first. 2x times negative 4 is next. 1 times 3x and 1 times negative 4. Now technically they don't have to be done in that order, but that is um, an order that can be helpful when, um, not only when we get to factoring, but also just to make sure that you've covered everything that you need to multiply. So 2x times 3x, 2x times 3x is going to be 6x squared. 2x times negative 4 is negative 8x. 1 times 3x is positive 3x. And then 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and combine like terms, which are going to be these middle two terms right here. So looking at that, we have 6x squared. Negative 8x plus 3x is going to be negative 5x and then minus 4. So this is our polynomial, specifically our trinomial that we get when we distribute the binomials that we're given. Next, we're going to look at squaring a binomial. So squaring a binomial is a type of distributing binomials. It just looks a little bit different to start. So when a binomial is squared, so remember that means it's raised to the second power, we unfortunately cannot just distribute this and say, oh, we square the x and square the three and we get x squared plus nine. It does not work that way. Um, so we have to instead go ahead and write out the binomial that's being squared twice. So x plus 3 times x plus 3. So we write it out times itself because that's what squared means. So remember, for example, 3 squared is really 3 times 3 or 7 squared is really 7 times 7. So if we have x plus 3 squared, that's really x plus 3 times x plus 3. And let's see what happens when we do that and see if we can find a pattern there. So x times x, x times 3, 3 times x and 3 times 3 will be the four sets of multiplication we need to perform. x times x is x squared. x times 3 is plus 3x. Three, 3 times x will be plus 3x. And 3 times 3 will be plus 9. Then we go ahead and we combine our common like terms. And when we do that, we end up with x squared plus 6x plus 9. So this is our final trinomial. 
Um, now, I do want to point something out. When we have a set of parentheses squared like this, if you see the pattern, you can jump straight to this without doing the in-between steps. If you see that really, um, what we did here was we squared the first term. So I'm going to call the first term A, and I'm going to call the uh, second term B. So we squared the first term. And then this one right here, 6x, came from 3x plus 3x, which was essentially A times B times 2. So that's 2AB plus the second term 3 squared, which was B squared. So that was X squared for this first term squared. Then you multiply these two terms together, 3 times x, and multiply that by 2 or add it to itself. And that's where we got 6x from. And then square the second term, 3 squared is 9. And so that would work um, if you would like to follow that pattern. You can, again, if you don't, you can write it out and you can distribute it. That is an option as well. Now with this one, we have... A first term and a second term but this time we have subtraction in between instead of over here we had the addition if you want to use that same pattern it will work except for this plus sign will now be a negative so if you wanted to you could jump straight to a squared minus 2ab plus b squared there and um, in this case i'll show you that and then i'll show you how to do it the longer way if you choose to go that route so 2x squared is going to be 2x times itself, which is going to be 4x squared. Then we would do 2 times 2x times 1. 2 times 2x times 1 is just going to be this term times this term times 2. So 2 times 2 is 4, and then times 1 is 4, and then times x, so 4x. But it is subtraction because it was subtraction originally between the two terms in the binomial, so minus 4x. And then we have b squared, b was one, the second term was one, so that's gonna be plus one. So this is our final answer if you know that pattern. If you don't, you can just write it out as 2x minus one times 2x minus one and distribute just like we did with regular binomials that were already written out. And when you do that, you get 2x times 2x is 4x squared. Then we have negative 2x, negative 2x, and then negative 1 times negative 1 is plus 1. Combine those middle like terms and you get 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 that way as well. So either method works, but if you know the shortcut, then it can save you some time. Same thing goes when we get to factoring, which is where we'll start going from something like the 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 to the binomials here. That can be helpful. Now, another special type we are going to see, and this one will especially be helpful when you get to um, factoring uh, what we call a difference of perfect squares. That will come in handy here. So um, identical plus or minus binomials. What that means is the same binomial, but one of them is plus and one of them is minus. Same thing here and here. It doesn't matter which order, plus first, then minus, or minus, then plus. But having um, the exact same binomial, except for that middle sign, is going to come up with um, a pattern that you will see between those. So when two binomials are being multiplied together and are the same binomials except for one has addition and one has subtraction, we distribute the binomials to simplify and then we can see what happens to form that pattern. So x times x, x times negative 3, 3 times x, and 3 times negative 3. x times x is x squared, and we have minus 3x plus 3x minus 9. When we do that, we combine the like terms in the middle. Now here, negative 3x plus 3x is 0. Those go away, and we just have x squared minus 9. And that's going to be our final answer. And this, uh, like I mentioned earlier, is considered a difference of perfect squares because x squared is a perfect square and 9 is a perfect square. And difference of perfect squares always factor back into the same um, binomials, but 1 plus 1 minus, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, in this unit. But one thing I want to point out here, it's just the x squared comes from that first term multiplied by itself. And then the 9 comes from that second term in each, which is the same multiplied by itself. So over here, if I wanted to use that same pattern, 
um, we can think of this as the 2x squared or times itself, 2x times 2x, which is going to be 4x squared. And then the second term, 1 squared or times itself is going to be 1. And so our final answer here, before I even multiply it out, if I know that pattern, is going to be, again, the first term squared or times itself, so 4x squared, minus the second term, which should be the same in each, squared, which is going to be 1 here. So 4x squared minus 1 would be your answer on that one. Now, if you don't remember that or um, don't have that memorized, then we can just multiply those out. And when we multiply them out, we do the same thing we've been doing. 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times 1 is plus 2x. Negative 1 times 2x is negative 2x. And negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. So if we combine those middle terms here, that gives us a zero. Those cancel out. And that's how we're left with just 4x squared minus 1. So essentially, those middle terms always cancel out. And that's how we get down to this 4x squared minus 1. All right. So with this one, we're going to look at a multiple choice example. So we have y equals 4 times x minus 2 times 3x plus 1. So with this, we want to go ahead and um, take a look at our answer choices, and we can see that these are all multiplied out, meaning there are no factors in parentheses that are still there. So what I want to look at is um, x minus 2 and 3x plus 1. We would want to go ahead and distribute these two binomials, and then we will worry about bringing the 4 in. So I want to bring your attention for a second to some basic numbers. So let's say I told you to multiply together 4 times 3 times 2. If you multiply three things together, three numbers together, it is not taking the 4 and multiplying by 3 and by multiplying by 2. So what you would do in that scenario would be 4 times 3, which is 12, and then you would multiply in that 2. 12 times 2 is 24. It is not 4 times 3 and 4 times 2. So that 4 times 3 would be 12, and 4 times 2 would be 8. If I add those together or multiply those together, I'm not going to get 24. So when we multiply three things together, it is not distributing one of them to the other two. I use that basic example because a common mistake that I see on these types of problems is that we will take 4 and multiply by this set of parentheses and by that set of parentheses, and that's not the case. I would suggest work with these two sets of parentheses as is and go ahead and distribute like we just talked about. And I would go ahead and do that. That way you can then bring the 4 in a little bit later. If you do the 4 now, you are only going to do it to one set of the parentheses. It doesn't matter which one, but you would only distribute it to one of those two sets of parentheses. But then you're going to be working with bigger numbers. And so that's why I would suggest you go ahead and multiply these two sets of parentheses together and then distribute the 4 in. So let's go ahead and do that. x times 3x is going to be 3x squared. x times 1 is plus x. Negative 2 times 3x is negative 6x. And negative 2 times 1 is going to be negative 2. Now we still have this 4 in front. So I'm going to put parentheses around that. And then we go ahead and look in our set of parentheses, and we notice that we do have two common like terms. So we can go ahead and combine those like terms. This is really a 1x and a negative 6x, or minus 6x. So these come together to be negative 5x. So we have 4 times 3x squared minus 5x minus 2. Now we're not quite done. You'll see that none of these match that. So what we want to go ahead and do is distribute that 4 into the parentheses. So 4 times 3x squared is 12x squared. 4 times negative 5x is negative 20x. And 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So that's 12x squared minus 20x minus 8, which gives us answer choice C as our answer. So in summary, we've talked about three things, but I do want to remind you that you can actually do all three of these the exact same way if you choose to do so. So multiplying binomials when we just had our A plus B times C plus D, we just go ahead and we multiply the, each term in the first set of parentheses 
by each term in the second set of parentheses and then simplify where we can. Remember squaring binomials is when we had something like a plus b squared. Um, you can write it out twice and just do a plus b times a plus b. And you can follow the same pattern that we um, did on those just general multiplying, or you can use a squared plus 2ab plus b squared to get your answer. And additionally, if it was a minus b squared, remember the only difference would be a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So that subtraction versus the addition depends on the original problem. And then identical plus or minus binomials. So that's remember when we have something like a plus b times a minus b. And when we have something like that, that's really just going to be a squared minus b squared. So the first term squared always minus the second term squared. So those are some patterns um, that we can see that can come in handy when we get to factoring here in a little bit.